I, Paul, am a devoted slave of Yahushua on assignment, authorized as an apostle to proclaim Yahuwah's words and acts. I write this letter to all the believers in Rome, Yahuwah's friends. The sacred writings contain preliminary reports by the prophets on Yahuwah's son. His descent from David roots him in history. His unique identity as son of Yahuwah was shown by the Spirit when Yahushua was raised from the dead, setting him apart as the Messiah, our Master. Through him we received both the generous gift of his life and the urgent task of passing it on to others who receive it by entering into obedient trust in Yahushua. You are who you are through this gift and call of Yahushua, and I greet you now with all the generosity of Yahuwah, our Father and our Master Yahushua, the Messiah. I thank Yahuwah through Yahushua for every one of you. That's first. People everywhere keep telling me about your lives of faith, and every time I hear them, I thank them, and Yahuwah, whom I I so love to worship and serve by spreading the good news of his son, the message, knows that every time I think of you in my prayers, which is practically all the time, I ask him to clear the way for me to come and see you. The longer this waiting goes on, the deeper the ache. I so want to be there to deliver Yahuwah's gift in person and watch you grow stronger right before my eyes but don't think I'm not expecting to get something out of this too you have so much to give me as I do to you please don't misinterpret my failure to visit you friends you have no idea how many times I've made plans for Rome I've been determined to get some personal enjoyment out of Yahuwah's work among you as I have in so many other non-Jewish towns and communities, but something has always come up and prevented it. Everyone I meet, it matters little whether they're mannered or rude, smart or simple, deepens my sense of independence and obligation. And that's why I can't wait to get to you in Rome preaching this wonderful good news of Yahuwah. It's news I'm most proud to proclaim this extraordinary message of Yahuwah's powerful plan to rescue everyone who trusts him, starting with Jews and then right on to everyone else. Yahuwah's way of putting people right shows up in the act of faith, confirming what scripture has said all along. The person in right standing before Yahuwah by trusting him really lives. But Yahuwah's angry displeasure erupts as acts of human mistrust and wrongdoing and lying accumulate, as people try to put a shroud over truth. But the basic reality of Yahuwah is plain enough. Open your eyes and there it is. By taking a long and thoughtful look at what Yahuwah has created, people have always been able to see what their eyes as such can't see eternal power for instance and the mystery of his divine being so nobody has a good excuse what happened was this people knew yahuwah perfectly well but when they didn't treat him like yahuwah refusing to worship him they trivialized themselves into silliness and confusion so that there was neither sense nor direction left in their lives. They pretended to know it all, but were illiterate regarding life. They traded the glory of Yahuwah, who holds the whole world in his hands, for cheap figurines you can buy at any roadside stand. So Yahuwah said, in, in effect, if it's what you want, that's what you get. It wasn't long before they were living in a pig pen, smeared with filth, filthy inside and out. And all this because they traded the true Yahuwah for a fake God and worshipped the God they made instead of the Yahuwah who made them. 
the Yahuwah we bless, the Yahuwah who blesses us. Oh, yes. Worse followed, refusing to know Yahuwah. They soon didn't know how to be human either. Women didn't know how to be women. Men didn't know how to be men. Sexually confused, they abused and defiled one another. Women with women, men with men. All lust, no love. And then they paid for it. Oh, how they paid for it. Emptied of Yahuwah and love. Impious and loveless wretches. Since they didn't bother to acknowledge Yahuwah, Yahuwah quit bothering them and let them run loose. And then all hell broke loose. Rampant evil. Grabbing and grasping. Vicious backstabbing. They made life hell on earth. With their envy wanton killing, bickering and cheating, look at them, mean-spirited, venomous, fork-tongued, Yahuwah bashers, bullies, swaggers, insufferable windbags. They keep inventing new ways of wrecking lives. They ditch their parents when they get in the way, stupid, slimy, cruel, cold-blooded, and it's not as if they don't know better. They know perfectly well they're spitting in Yahuwah's face, and they don't care. Worse, they hand out prizes to those who do the worst things best. Those people are on a dark spiral downward, but if you think that leaves you on the high ground where you can point your fingers at others, think again. Every time you criticize someone, you condemn yourself. It takes one to know one. Judgmental criticism of others is a well-known way of escaping detection in your own crimes and misdemeanors. But Yahuwah isn't so easily diverted. He sees right through all such smoke screens and holds you to what you've done. You didn't think, did you, that just by pointing your finger at others, you would distract Yahuwah from seeing all your misdoings and from coming down on you hard? Or did you think that because he's such a nice Yahuwah, he'd let you off the hook? Better think this one through from the beginning. Yahuwah is kind, but he's not soft. In kindness, he takes us firmly by the hand and leads us into a radical life change. You're not getting by with anything. Every refusal and avoidance of Yahuwah adds fuel to the fire. The day is coming when it's going to blaze hot and high. Yahuwah's fury and righteous judgment. Make no mistake, in the end, you get what's coming to you. Real life for those who work on Yahuwah's side, but to those who insist on getting their own way and take the path of least resistance fire. If you go against the grain, you get splinters, regardless of which neighborhood you're from, what your parents taught you, what schools you attended. But if you embrace the way Yahuwah does things, there are wonderful payoffs, again, without regard to where you are from or how you were brought up. Being a Jew won't give you an automatic stamp of approval. Yahuwah pays no attention to what others say or what you think about you. He makes up his own mind. If you sin without knowing what you're doing, Yahuwah takes that into account. But if you sin knowing full well what you're doing, that's a different story entirely. Merely hearing Yahuwah's law is a waste of your time if you don't do what he commands. Doing not hearing is what makes the difference with Yahuwah. When outsiders who have never heard of Yahuwah's law follow it more or less by instinct, they confirm its truth by their obedience. They show that Yahuwah's law is not something alien imposed on us from without, but woven into the very fabric of our creation. There is something deep within them that echoes Yahuwah's yes and no, right and wrong. Their response to Yahuwah's yes and no will become public knowledge on the day Yahuwah makes his final decision about every man and woman. 
The message from Yahuwah that I proclaim through the Yahushua takes into account all these differences. If you are brought up Jewish, don't assume that you can lean back in the arms of your religion and take it easy, feeling smug because you're an insider to Yahuwah's re revelation, a connoisseur of the best things of Yahuwah, informed on the latest doctrines. I have a special word of caution for you who are sure that you have it all together yourselves and because you know Yahuwah's revealed word inside and out, feel qualified to guide others through their blind alleys and dark nights and confused emotions to Yahuwah. While you are guiding others, who is go going to guide you? I'm quite serious. While preaching, don't steal. Are you going to rob people blind who would suspect you? The same with adultery, the same with idolatry. You can get by with almost anything if you front it with eloquent talk about Yahuwah and his law. The line from scripture, it's because of you Jews that the outsiders frown on Yahuwah, shows it's an old problem that isn't going to go away. Circumcision, the surgical ritual that marks you as a Jew, is great if you live in according with Yahuwah's law. But if you don't, it's worse than not being circumcised. The reverse is also true. The uncircumcised who keep Yahuwah's ways are as good as the circumcised. In fact, better. Better to keep Yahuwah's law uncircumcised than break it circumcised. Don't you see? It's not the cut of a knife that makes you a Jew. You become a Jew by who you are. It's the mark of Yahuwah on your heart, not of the knife on your skin that makes you a Jew. And recognition comes from Yahuwah, not legalistic critics. So what difference does it make who is a Jew and who isn't? Who has been trained in Yahuwah's ways and who hasn't? As it turns out, it makes a lot of difference but not the difference so many have assumed. First, there's the matter of being put in charge of writing down and caring for Yahuwah's revelations. These holy scriptures, so what if in the course of doing that, some of those Jews abandoned their post? Yahuwah didn't abandon them. Do you think their faithlessness cancels out his faithfulness? Not on your life depend on it. Yahuwah keeps his word even when the whole world is lying through its teeth. Scripture says the same. Your words stand fast and true. Rejection doesn't faze you. But if our wrongdoing only underlines and confirms Yahuwah's right doing, shouldn't we be commanded for helping out? Since our lies don't even make a dent in his truth, isn't it wrong for Yahuwah to back us to the wall and hold us to our word? These questions come up. The answer to such question is no. A most empathetic no. How else would things ever get straightened out if Yahuwah didn't do the straightening? It's simply perverse to say, if my lies serve to show off Yahuwah's truth all the more gloriously, why blame me? I'm doing Yahuwah a favor. Some people are actually trying to put such words in our mouths, claiming that we go around saying, the more evil we do, the more good Yahuwah does, so let's just do it. That's pure slander, as I'm sure you'll agree. So where does that put us? Do we Jews get a better break than others? Not really. Basically, all of us, whether insiders or outsiders, start out in identical conditions, which is to say that we all start out as sinners. Scriptures leaves no doubt about it. There's nobody living right, not even one. Nobody knows the score. Nobody alert for Yahuwah. They've all taken the wrong turn. They've all wandered down blind alleys. No one's living right. 
I can't find a single one. Their throats are gaping graves. Their tongues slick as mudslides. Every word they speak is tinged with poison. They open their mouths and pollute the air. They race for the honor of sinner of the year. Litter the land with heartbreak and ruin. Don't know the first thing about living with others. They never give Yahuwah the time of day. This makes it clear, doesn't it? That whatever is written in these scriptures is not what Yahuwah says about others, but to us, to whom these scriptures were addressed in the first place. And it's clear enough, isn't it, that we're sinners, every one of us, in the same sinking boat with everybody else. Our environment with Yahuwah's revelation doesn't put us right with Yahuwah. What it does is force us to face our complicity in everyone else's sin. But in our time, something new has been added. What Moses and the prophets witnessed to all those years has happened. The Yahuwah setting things right that we read about has become Yahushua setting things right for us. And not only for us, but for everyone who believes in him. For there is no difference between us and them in this. Since we've compiled this long and sorry record as sinners, both us and them, and proved that we are utterly incapable of living the glorious lives Yahuwah wills for us, Yahuwah did it for us out of sheer generosity. He put us in right standing with, with himself, a pure gift. He got us out of the mess we're in and restored us to where he always wanted us to be, and he did it by means of Yahushua. Yahuwah sacrificed Yahushua on the altar of the world to clear the world of sin. Having faith in him sets us in the clear. Yahuwah decided on this course of action in full view of the public to set the world in the clear with himself through the sacrifice of Yahushua, finally taking care of the sins he had so so patiently endured this is not only clear but it's now this is current history yahuwah sets things right he also makes it possible for us to live in his rightness so where does that leave our proud jewish insider claims and counterclaims cancelled yes cancelled what we've learned is this, Yahuwah does not respond to what we do, we respond to what Yahuwah does. We've finally figured it out. Our lives get in step with Yahuwah and all others by letting him set the pace, not by proudly or anxiously trying to run the parade. And where does that leave our proud Jewish claims of having a corner on Yahuwah? also cancelled. Yahuwah is the Yahuwah of outsider non-Jews as well as insider Jews. How could it be otherwise since there is only one Yahuwah? Yahuwah sets right all who welcome his action and enter into it, both those who follow our religious system and those who have never heard of our religion. But by shifting our focus from what we do to what Yahuwah does, don't we cancel out all our careful keeping of rules and ways Yahuwah commanded? Not at all. What happens, in fact, is that by putting that entire way of life in its proper place, we confirm it.